Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the Fresnay Saray formulas. Now, this involves TNB frames, and so I would like to remind you guys what the TNB frames are. So consider some vector valued function. Then, if you recall, the TNB frames are unit tangent, unit normal, and unit binormal. And the way that we can define them are. like this, where r prime is really the derivative of our vector with respect to time, and t prime is really the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to time. Now, there are also two important scalar quantities in TNB frames, which are curvature and torsion. Curvature is typically denoted by the Greek letter kappa, and we define it by the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. So just like that. And torsion is typically denoted by the Greek letter tau. And the way it's usually defined is by the negative of the derivative of the unit binomial vector with respect to arc length dotted with the unit normal vector. So just like that. Now really, the fresnay saray formulas are about asking yourselves, well, what is the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length? What is the derivative of the unit normal vector with respect to arc length? And what is the derivative of the unit binomial vector with respect to arc length? Expressed in terms of these five scalar and vector quantities. We're going to start by determining the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. So then how should we even figure out what this is? Well, notice it's a derivative of the unit tangent vector. Well, the unit normal vector is defined using a derivative of the unit tangent vector. So let's start out by writing the definition of the unit normal vector. Now, let me actually re-express this in the notation that we have here. So just like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to bring arc length into the picture. And the way we'll do that is by, by recognizing that d2 over dt can be rewritten as dt over ds times ds over dt. Right, so this really just comes from the chain rule. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move up here. And I should probably write this more properly. Usually the scalar comes before the vector. So I'm just going to swap these two in both the numerator and denominator. So just like that. Now, notice in the denominator, this is really the magnitude of a scalar times a vector. So really, this is in the form of magnitude of kv. And if you recall, when we have something in this form, we can actually pull the scalar outside of the magnitude. And what we get is the absolute value of k times the magnitude of v. And so really, we're going to apply this rule to what we have in the denominator. Right, we're going to pull the ds over dt outside of the magnitude and give it an absolute value. But do we really need the absolute value bars in front of the ds over dt? Well, it turns out we don't. Because if you recall, arc length as a function of time is given by this formula. And if we take the derivative of arc length with respect to time, we're really just applying the fundamental theorem of calculus, which means this is really just the integrand replacing u with t. In other words, s prime of t is really ds over dt, and it's really just the magnitude of r prime. So really, ds over dt is the magnitude of the vector, so it can't be negative, which is why we don't need the absolute value bars. But then we see that the ds over dt's cancel out. And we know that the magnitude of dt over ds is our definition of curvature, so I can replace the denominator with curvature. And therefore, if I multiply curvature on both sides, we get dt over ds is equal to curvature times the unit normal vector. And so this right here is the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length, our first fresnay saray formula. And so yeah, that's pretty much how we could get that one.
Next, we're going to figure out the derivative of the unit binomial vector with respect to arc length. Now, to figure out this one, we're actually going to write the definition of the unit binomial vector. Which... Next, we're going to take the derivative with respect to arc length on both sides of the equation. And so doing this, we get dB over dS equals the derivative of a cross product, right? Let's go, right? We all love the derivative of a cross product because it's really just like the ordinary product rule. It's going to be derivative, no derivative, plus no derivative, derivative. But we know that dt over ds is really just curvature times the unit normal vector. Now notice in this first cross product, we have a vector pointing in the same direction as this vector. Well, really, when we take the cross product of two vectors that are parallel, cross product zero. Really, we now have that dB over dS is equal to this. And so now at this point, it sort of looks like we should have computed dN over dS before we tried to compute this, right? That was good, because it's like, what? This doesn't, this doesn't look like it's helping, right? That was good. But it turns out we can use a little trick to show that this cross product points in the same direction as the unit normal vector. Or, in other words, we're going to show that this vector is a scalar multiple of the unit normal vector. And to see why that's the case, first of all, we know that the unit tangent vector is perpendicular to the unit normal vector. But really, we know that the derivative of a unit vector is also perpendicular to the unit vector. So dn over ds must also be perpendicular to n. And it turns out, because these two vectors are perpendicular to the same vector, their cross product must be parallel to that vector. In other words, t cross dn over ds must be parallel to n. But what we're really trying to say here is that t cross dn over ds is a scalar multiple of the unit normal vector. And we're going to say that scalar multiple is, say, alpha. So now what this means is we can re-express dB over dS as alpha n. And so it may look like we've made this problem harder because now we have to figure out what alpha is. But it's really not that bad because we can actually take the dot product of n on both sides of the equation and we get this. And we know that the right hand side is equal to alpha. But so then what about the left hand side? Well, Notice, this dot product looks really similar to the definition of torsion. In fact, torsion is the negative of this dot product. Therefore, this dot product must be the negative of torsion. And so now, we know what our scalar multiple is. Alpha is really just the negative of torsion. So, dB over dS is the negative torsion times the unit normal vector. And so this completes the derivation of the fernet serre formula for the unit binomial vector. So now all we have to do is the derivative of the unit normal vector with respect to arc length. And so to find the derivative of the unit normal vector with respect to arc length, we're actually going to apply both of these facts to help us out. We're going to start by writing the unit normal vector as a cross product consisting of unit tangent and unit binomial. Now, we know that the unit binomial vector is equal to the unit tangent cross the unit normal. In fact, it's pretty nice if you think of this as a picture. Notice t cross n is b, and notice we move in a counterclockwise direction. Um, so t cross n is positive b. If we instead moved in the clockwise direction, we would have n cross t equals negative b, right? So moving clockwise, we would instead get negative b. So that's really uh, the way you think about it using a picture. So to write the unit normal vector as a cross product of this, notice b cross t is equal to n, because when we do b cross t, we're moving counterclockwise. So yes, b cross t is positive n. Right, so just like that. But now we want to take the derivative with respect to arc length, so we're going to take the derivative with respect to arc length on both sides of the equation.
So really we get dn over ds equals the derivative of a cross product. So again, it's just like the ordinary product rule. We're gonna have derivative, no derivative, plus no derivative, derivative. Right, so just like that. But we now know that dv over ds is equal to negative torsion times the unit normal vector. So let's replace dv over ds with this. And similarly, we also know that dt over ds is equal to curvature times the unit normal vector. So let's replace dt over ds with this. Now it turns out there's a property of cross products that says that we can pull the scalars outside of the cross product, right? So we can pull the negative torsion outside of the cross product. We can pull the curvature outside of the cross product. So if we do that, we will get this. Now I'm actually gonna move over here. So really all we gotta do now is compute these two cross products. But again, it's gonna be helpful if we look at our diagram. Now notice if we perform the cross product n cross t, right? If we do n cross t, notice we're moving clockwise. So n cross t is going to give us negative b. And if we do b cross n, notice in our diagram, if we do b cross n, we're moving clockwise. So we're going to get negative t. So now simplifying this, we get this as the formula for dn over ds. So yeah, we have derived the fernet serre formulas in terms of the five scalar and vector quantities, t and b, curvature and torsion. And so yeah, that's pretty much the idea of how you could derive them. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.